What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and welcome to Grounded 100 Days WoW Edition. I began this video as soon as 1.0 released, and it has taken over 200 hours of recording and editing to make. With that being said, there's two things I still want for Christmas, and those are for you to hit the subscribe button, and to leave a like on the video. My main objective for this world was to 100% the game in 100 days. I also had a few side objectives, including collecting all the armor and weapons, building all the sign sets, trophies and stuffed bugs, and collecting as many trinkets and gold cards as possible. I began by setting the difficulty to woe and picked Willow as we all know she's the best character. The box cracked open and I waited several years for my character to stand up. A few moments later. After Willow had finished looking around, I was finally able to begin playing the game myself. I grabbed the granola bars and note from the field station and proceeded to analyze sap, plant fiber, and a pebblet. I removed the lawn mites from the giant laser as I needed to progress the story. I analyzed weevil meat before collecting another piece. I collected the tape from the spacer before collecting some more weevil meat. I then activated the spacer, unlocking burgle. I collected a dandelion tuft to reduce my chances of dying from fall damage and proceeded to collect a bunch of acorns. I made a crafting table on the rocks and headed into the oak lab to grab a tape and analyze acorn shells, tops, and sprigs. I used wide interaction to pick up the sap from the shelf before grabbing another note and reviving Burgle. I grabbed another tape and activated the ASL, using it to unlock the smithing station. I grabbed the final tape and left. I used the crafting table to make the acorn face mask Acorn Shovel and Acorn Leggings. I completed my first Burgle quest by killing three Red Worker Ants. I then killed some Grubs and used their hides to make a Weevil Shield, an essential part of survival in Woe. I made myself an Acorn Chestplate, completing the set. I headed to the Red Ant Hill, where I was able to get the Rotten Bee Mask, a Scabby Flavor, the Rotten Bee Leggings, the Rotten Bee Chestplate, and the Red Ant Hill Burgle Chip. I analysed the items I had collected, including the red ant egg. I grabbed the Chubbs series scabby on the way into the Four Leaf Clover cave. Discovering the clover unlocked tier 1 of Coupe de Gras. I managed to sneak my way through a large crowd of sleeping lava, allowing me to loot a skeleton and collect the compliance badge. This would allow me to heal with every perfect block when equipped, but I would take more damage. I headed into the field station in the hedge and grabbed the tape and granola bars before analysing more stuff. I headed into a portion of the hedge lab where I found a tape as well as two very angry robots. I grabbed another note and granola bar and then activated the surveyor scanner all around the map. I headed into another small portion of the hedge lab and found some raw science, a chest, some water, another tape, and some more granola bars. While fighting spiderlings, I was able to unlock tier 1 of Parrymaster. I found the Supreme Scabby and then looted another chest along with some bandages. I dropped into the main hedge lab and grabbed the first piece of the password. I began taking a beating from the spiderlings, so I jumped onto the table. While trying to grab the granola bars, I opened the surveyor scanner and then was hit in the back by a spiderling, causing my first death. I headed back to reclaim my stuff, but my life was yet again claimed by the spiderlings. On the way back to collecting my stuff, I discovered a field station, unlocking tier 1 of Natural Explorer. While fighting the spiderlings, I unlocked tier 2 of Parry Master. Eventually, I was victorious and claimed my prize of my own loot. I collected the second piece of the password, along with some bandages, before running away from the Orb Weaver Jr. I defeated a Ruz T, allowing me to collect my third piece of the password. I headed to the storage room, where I was able to collect the silk rope. I picked up the Ghost Mint Scabby, and grabbed the fourth and final piece of the password. I used the Bioscanner, and input the password into the computer, allowing me to pick up the Hedge Super Chip, along with another tape. I grabbed the web samples tape from a fallen lab piece and headed into the secret cave to obtain the Rotten Red Ant Club, Recon Journal, and the Ant Totem Recipe. I grabbed one final tape before leaving the hedge. I gave Burgle both of the chips we had discovered and used my raw science to unlock fiber bandage efficiency. I used the Rotten Red Ant Club to take out some red soldier ants allowing me to collect another scabby. I found a file in a field station and used the resource analyzer to analyze a bunch more parts. I crafted and upgraded a regular red ant club to level three. What the hell? 
Oh no. Brother, brother, no, 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 no. I made a gill tube using silk rope from the Hedge Lab storage room. I headed into the pond depths where I discovered the sunken T Rex and prized the rotten stinger spear from its jaws. I got hit once by a diving bell spider, taking me to one HP instantly. I tried to escape, but was attacked by another from behind. Hey, yo. I discovered the wedding ring and sunken pot landmarks, which unlocked the Mertine mutation. I was able to kill a diving bell spider on my second attempt, getting its chunk. I found a small lab with a note, a scabby, and some upgrade rocks. I looted the pond lab storage room for all of its goodies, including some raw water flea meat, which I ate to reduce my thirst. I found some more data and then hit the lever, activating the breakers. I took out the RCAR, giving me the gold card and grabbed the file from on the bed. I activated all three breakers and then grabbed the toxicology badge along with the frostbite scabby. I entered the pond lab with 10 seconds to spare. I grabbed the ginger spice scabby and activated the computer, picking up two more pieces of data along the way. I got one shot from 70% health by an RCAR even though I was miles away. When I got back, I was hit from behind by a Taze T. <clears throat> I recovered my stuff and found the robots were stuck in the wall. Oh my god, stop bro, I'm stuck. Can you help me? I activated the Pond Dome and grabbed the Pond Super Chip along with another tape. I upgraded my Red Ant Club to level 5 and then upgraded all of my Acorn Armor to level 2. I found an illegal weevil meeting under the can and so I had to deal with them. I gave Burgle the super chip and then took out my first bombardier to obtain some bombardier parts and a boiling gland. I then killed my first ladybug. While fighting another, I unlocked tier 1 of cardio fan before finishing it off. I then killed a third and still had gotten no head, just like real life. I used the ladybug parts to craft the chest plate and leggings, making me much stronger. I also upgraded them both to level 5. I used the toxicology badge to help me take out my first stink bug. I defeated a fourth ladybug, but still no head. I defeated a second stink bug for even more parts, and then a fifth ladybug, which finally gave me the head I needed. That was my first and last head of 2022. I headed back to the hedge lab to farm a load of berries as I knew I'd need these for lots of other things later, such as the insect hammer. While breaking web sacks, the game gave me tier one of barbarian. I managed to get another ladybug head from a web sack and then headed home to make a jerky rack to hang my berry chunks on. I made a bone dagger and then headed to the red ant nest to steal their eggs. While here, I found a large pile of billy hog nuggets at the bottom of the nest. These make for good smoothie fodder, so I took them. Yoink! I used the eggs to make bombs and then crafted a ladybug helmet. I analyzed a grass plank and was taken out by a bombardier while building. After I'd finished building, I bombed the door to a secret lab. Once inside, I grabbed the pinch whacker, a bunch of tier 2 and tier 3 plates, and the rotten berry charm. I upgraded my ladybug helmet to level 5. I then used the plates I'd collected to upgrade my chest plate and leggings to level 6 sleek. I made a smoothie station and then crafted a tier 2 insect hammer. Using my new hammer, I instantly collected 3 milk molars and then used them to increase my max active mutations to 3, allowing me to equip cardio fan. I got lucky and got a gold card from a spiderling. Nice. I killed the remaining rust teas, which also gave me the gold card. You're joking. Not another one? I used the bone dagger to break through the soggy roots and grab the minotaur maze key. Willow slipped at a crucial moment and I had my toxicology badge equipped, so I died from fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> I collected the crusty roly-poly helmet and slipped again attempting to make the jump. This time I was prepared and was able to save myself. Third time's the charm and I was able to make the jump, allowing me to collect the milk molar. I used the molars I had collected to increase my max active mutations to five and healing to 115%. I used the megas to increase my maximum consumable and resource stack sizes. I ate some spicy shards to unlock tier two of spicy safety, which would increase my defense when equipped. I unlocked tier one of rock cracker by breaking quartzite in the haze. I upgraded my ladybug helmet to level six sleek also. I headed underwater and grabbed the mossy key. While swimming, I unlocked tier two of cardio fan. I found 500 raw science and the rotten fin flops in another cave. The final cave I explored contained the abomination totem recipe. I headed back to the depths and used the key to unlock the chest 
giving me a Mega Milk Molar and the Sunken Outpost Burgle Chip. I gave the chip to Burgle and then used more molars to increase my healing and decrease my hunger and thirst drain. I used my Megas to increase my max consumable stack size. I used my Raw Science to unlock the Buff Lungs mutation. I looted a field station in the Haze, giving me a file and some granola bars. Time for the Haze Lab. After bombing the door, I entered and scanned my hand. Once inside, I made quick work of the robots and headed deeper into the lab to pull the switch, unlocking the rest. I collected the defense badge and some more granola bars before opening the gates to hell. I turned around but realized I was trapped. I thought I could finish off this infected lava, but it just exploded in my face, causing me to die. I headed back and tried again. I took out the lava first and then focused on the ladybug. I was successfully able to take it out, which unlocked Truffle Tussle. I headed into the final room and collected the Haze Super Chip, along with some bombs and granola bars. I gave Burgle the chip and then unlocked the oven and the cookery. I tried to repair my armor, only to realize that I had no repair glue, and I couldn't craft it until after I'd beaten the assistant manager so the game had just screwed me. I had no choice but to make a brand new chest plate and upgrade it to level 5. I had just enough plates to upgrade my leggings, which repaired them for me. I made my way to the Black Ant Lab, as I had to beat the assistant manager ASAP to unlock repair glue. I took out the robot and gained clearance level A. I grabbed a file along with some more granola bars. I took out a bunch more robots and then found a chest containing some useful smoothies. I looted another chest, giving me another bomb and then grabbed four more granola bars from the storage room. I took out the remaining robots, giving me tier two of Barbarian, the Taze T gold card, and granting me clearance level B. I looted a couple more chests for even more upgrade rocks. I crafted a black ant shovel with the parts I had collected. I broke open the entrance to the boss and began the assistant manager fight. I got hit once and it took away two thirds of my health. This wasn't going to be easy. I got hit once again, almost killing me in one shot. It summoned its lasers, and I took one to the face, causing me to disintegrate. I reloaded my save as I felt it was unfair that the game wouldn't let me repair my armor due to an oversight by the devs. Round two, I ran straight into the lasers, killing myself pretty quickly. On my third attempt, I was finally able to kill the assistant manager, although my helmet was being held together by the antennas on the ladybug's head. I looted the body, giving me the key card as well as the gold card. I grabbed the Black Ant Hill super chip and then grabbed another chest on the way out. I gave the chip to Burgle, which allowed me to unlock tier 2 globs as well as the glue masher. Data update, I'd collected most of it but I still had a few pieces missing particularly the miscellaneous ones. I was fighting a bombardier and it got hit once. This stunned my character so badly that I died before I could do anything. 11 deaths in 11 days is rough, but I promise you, it gets better. I respawned at the Black Ant Hill lab, so I headed to the sandbox and grabbed the sandbox burgle chip along with a tape and a bunch of loot. Willow decided to slip again, causing another death. I respawned inside a field station in the haze, which guaranteed me another death. Thanks, Obsidian. I crafted myself a tier 2 axe and then collected all of my loot. I used a bomb to knock down the leaning shovel. I also managed to unlock tier 1 of Chopper. I used my tier 2 hammer to break the cooler box and then grabbed the crusty roly poly leggings from within the maze. I used my red ant club to roll the 20 sided dice, unlocking tier 2 of Coupe de Gras. I then used the Minotaur maze key to open the chest, obtaining some quartzite a Mega Milk Molar, and the Picnic Burgle Chip. I used my molars to increase my healing, and my Megas to increase my resource stack size. I grabbed the Dog Loaf Scabby, and headed into the can to grab an extra 1,000 raw science. I gave Burgle the chips we had found, and then unlocked flavoured globs, multi-story bases, the Milk Molar Scabby Scanner, the Mint Mace Recipe, and the Peblet Foundations. While collecting clay, I was able to unlock tier 2 of Rock Cracker. I built a basic staircase up the side of the tree, which was where I planned on building my base. He's done it! I very luckily got a gold Orb Weaver card from Killing One. I grabbed the Frankenlein Scabby and then bombed the Upper Yard Ascent, just in case I died and didn't have a glider. I peeped a Black Ox Beetle, and then it charged at me. I opened my inventory to equip my glider, but failed to realize I already had it equipped and died to a game bug. Good thing I bombed the upper yard ascent to give myself an easy way back up. I grabbed my stuff 
and headed into the big red ball cave. After a bit of trial and error, I was able to ride the ball like a clown from Terraria and get the milk molar. While digging up even more clay, I unlocked tier 3 of Rock Cracker. Chopping grass down allowed me to unlock tier 1 of Grass Master. As you can see, I made great progress on the base, putting together the framework for a storage room. I then blueprinted all of the chests and realised this wasn't going to be cheap. I moved everything from my old base on the rocks up here, so this was my new home. Base number two. I made a bunch of chests and then crafted a load of spinning wheels before making a weed stem pallet. I used the stem pallet to help me build the grinders. While farming ants, I unlocked tier 2 of Ant Annihilator, one of the best mutations in the game. These gave me enough parts to finish building my grinders. I made and upgraded a mosquito needle to level 5. I discovered a field station and found a piece of data inside. I used my mosquito needle to take on a bunch of termites. It was going really well until I was ambushed by a ladybird larva who killed me very quickly. Also worth quickly pointing out, we have a death count on the screen. I only just realised that it's actually two deaths behind, so keep that in mind, we'll add on two deaths at the end of the video. I managed to get back and grab my stuff, but the ladybird larva was waiting for me. After escaping, I decided to take on a roly-poly as I needed tough gunk. It killed me from full health in one hit. I hope you now understand how hard woe mode really is. I decided I wanted some charcoal. Hot, hot. The game decided it was very hot. My second attempt was closer, but I still didn't survive. As we've seen so far, third time is indeed the charm, and on my third attempt, I was able to collect the charcoal without dying. I then used the charcoal to make myself an oven. I also made two dew collectors to make it easier to find water. This made it so that as soon as I woke up, I could instantly drink water. I made a bunch more chests, and then analysed the termite parts we had collected. Look at all those weevils. I collected the girthscape scabby, and then headed into another cave. The wolf spider didn't seem very happy to see me, so I had to deal with it, unlocking tier 1 of Mithridatism. After killing it, I collected my prize. I used the mosquito needle to kill some black ants for parts, and managed to somehow obtain the gold card in the process. <laughs> Are you serious? I killed a bunch more ants, including soldiers for their parts and mandibles. I exited the black ant hill into the sandbox and headed straight to the field station to collect the data. I spent my milk molars to increase my max health and stamina. I took on some ant lions for parts and pincers and also unlocked stage 3 of Barbarian. I used my tier 2 shovel to dig up the melted moat key and then used it to unlock the chest, obtaining the salt morning star recipe and a milk molar. I killed a few more antlions, including one in a pit, which allowed me to enter a secret tunnel and collect a bunch of salt. While here, I also picked up the crusty roly-poly breastplate. I completed a trail marker quest for Burgle, and then used the black ant parts I had collected to make the black ant sword and upgraded it to level 5. I also made the black ant shield. I tried taking on a roly-poly with the defense badge equipped, but it healed quicker than I could damage it. Thankfully, a wild ladybird larva appeared, and we teamed up to take out the roly-poly together. This gave me six parts and three shells. I then took on a few ladybirds as I needed tough gunk for tier three weapons. I took out another roly-poly for even more parts. I upgraded my ladybug helmet and chest plates to level seven, and then made the termite axe. I upgraded my black ant sword to spicy, meaning we had our first elemental weapon. I tested my new weapon on a wolf spider and was easily able to vanquish him. I threw some rocks to knock down some pupa and then used my tier three axe to collect it. We needed this for a bunch of new weapons and armor. I cooked up some mint globs and used them to make the mint mace, giving us one of the most powerful weapons in the game. I headed to one of the most dangerous areas in the game, the Ladybird Lava Cave. These guys hurt. A lot. And I was quickly overwhelmed by them, so I decided to run away as I clearly wasn't ready. We must flee this place. Run away! Run away! Run away! I headed back to the pond lab and I... Hey, yo! This is a kid's game. I collected the mussel sprouts for more smoothies and used my mega milk molars to increase my max resource stack size. I then looted a chest I had missed earlier in the playthrough that I saw while editing. I killed a water boatman and casually got another gold card. Are you serious right now, bro? I headed into a new room and used the assistant manager keycard to open it. This let me hit a button opening the stump lab and also gave me the left elf charm. I found a secret cave which had some raw science, a mega milk molar, a milk molar, a rotten slime lantern, some more raw science, a scabby, 
some more raw science, and a backpack with some arrows. On day 28, we received our first raid from lava. I saw them coming and headed to where they were coming from. I couldn't find them, and by the time I got back to the base, my ramp up had been destroyed. I killed the lava and defended my base, unlocking Blade Master in the process. I rebuilt the ramp to my base, and then also made a cookery as well as a couple of grinders, giving me a total of eight now. With my new mint mace, I was able to smoke a roly-poly. I was fighting a ladybird lava and got blindsided by another. One combo later and I was dead. I unlocked tier 3 of Ant Annihilator while killing black ants and then climbed a plant for 500 raw science. I jumped off the plant and then did some parkour to get to a mega milk molar inside of a plant pot. I used my tier 3 axe to collect some lint from the doormat and then made a roly-poly chest plate, which I upgraded all the way to level 7 bulky for maximum defense. I then completed the set with a roly-poly helmet and some leggings. I upgraded the pants to bulky level 7, and the helmet to bulky level 8. I made a bunch more jerky racks, and then also finally finished all of the chests in my storage room. I had a long conversation with Burgle, and he gave me the fuse for the giant scabby. I made myself a salt morning star, meaning we now had a weapon of each of the important elements. What about me? Wait a minute! Who are you? I went into the cave in the ravine and found some raw science, a recon journal and a mega milk molar. On my way out, I decided to fight a black ox beetle along with my ally, the ladybird lava. The lava didn't last very long, but I was able to kill the black ox beetle in his honor and got a horn and two parts as a reward. I broke a spicy shard and saw my feet kick something. It was the char char charm. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's right, we finally got our first RNG-based charm on day 32. I defeated another Black Ox Beetle with help from another Ladybird Lava. This one only gave me one part, so I killed another and got two more parts. I used my Tier 3 Axe to break some roots, allowing me to get the Intern Badge and hit the Milk Molar Jackpot with five Milk Molars at once. On my way down from the upper yard, I grabbed another Milk Molar along with the Porridge Scabby. I went home and crafted the Black Ox Hammer before spending my Megas to increase my max consumable stack size and my Milk Molars on maxing out my healing and increasing my max stamina. With my new Tier 3 Hammer, I was able to collect Supreme Quartzite and Supreme Marble for upgrading my weapons and armor. I was also able to collect Rust and Wooden Splinters, which I then analyzed, unlocking level 13 of Brain Power. I headed into the Stump Lab in the upper yard, making sure not to die on the way in. I grabbed the Mantis recipe from the floor, looted a chest containing the Right Elf Charm, and hit a PC, opening a door. I dropped through the newly opened door onto the Stump Burgle Chip and also found a chest with some goodies. I found the first Sour Wormhole rocket and collected the candy for a future Sour Weapon. I gave Burgle the Stump Chip and unlocked Mighty and Flavored Jewels. I upgraded all of my Roly Poly armor to level 8 and completed a base expansion, giving us quite a large platform. I killed a Helpless Firefly for its parts and then reduced my hunger and thirst drain using Milk Molars. I killed a Lava and got myself another Gold Card. <laughs> I collected a tier 2 rock, the Might Rider Scabby, some raw science, and a tier 2 quartzite rock too. After a lot of resource farming, I finally finished the base platform for our base, giving us loads of room for more stuff. My base was so big that I jumped off it onto the light to grab the aerobic scabby. I killed another pit antlion, opening a new secret tunnel with a supreme quartzite rock and a mega milk molar. With the defeat of another pit antlion, I re-entered the salt mines to grab more salt and collect the supreme rocks I had left behind previously. I broke a supreme marble rock and then dug up a skeleton containing the biomedical badge. I upgraded my salt morning star to level 5 and maxed out my roly-poly helmet and leggings before realizing I was one plate short of upgrading the chest plate. I made a full set of antlion armor and equipped it to collect some more hot charcoal from the springs. I made sure to collect plenty as you need lots later on in the game. I unlocked tier 3 of fresh defense from eating mints and also collected the mega milk molar from within the barbecue. I maxed out my roly poly chest plate and analyzed a bunch of stuff, unlocking level 14 of brain power. I decided to build a bunch of sap catchers at my base as sap is a resource you need truckloads of. I headed to the hedge and grabbed the broom of the BLT recipe, as well as the molar right underneath the room. I used wide interaction to harvest thistle needles at record speeds. A new record!
I cooked myself a broodmother BLT and headed back to the red ant nest to steal all of their food. They were a bit angry, but they helped me unlock Blade Master Stage 2. I also managed to get the gold card on the way out. When is it gonna end, Robbie? I've had enough of it! I used the eggs I stole to make five more bombs. I used two of these to open up the cave in Spade Gulch for some more granola bars and a Mega Milk Molar. I also upgraded my max stamina using my molars. Time to fight the Broodmother. I was nervous, but confident in my combat skills. I dropped bombs in the middle of the arena to help me kill the Spiderlings and Orb Weaver Juniors. And with the difficult part dealt with, I just had to take care of the easy part, which was finishing off the Broodmother. This unlocked Mom Jeans and gave me a bunch of new parts for crafting. I analysed the parts which unlocked level 15 of brain power, which is the max level, putting us one step closer to 100%ing the game. With the drops, I made a club of the mother demon and a mask of the mother demon also. I upgraded the mask to level 8 and the club to level 5, as they are both super OP. I went back to the Abomination Totem Cave to grab the two tier 3 rocks inside. I then used a bomb to get to the top of the Ravine Cave and collect the scabby. I headed back into the Ladybird Lava Cave as I felt much more prepared. I was doing just fine until I got hit in the back by a Ladybird that somehow came in the same entrance that I just came from. As I was clearing out the cave, I managed to get the Insulating Lava Spike Trinket. I then collected both of the Milk Molars and all of the upgrade rocks here. This allowed me to max out my Mask of the Mother Demon. I used the Mega Milk Molars to max out my consumable stack size at 30 items. I used the Milk Molars to increase my max health. I dropped some Plant Slurry and tamed myself a pet, Aphid. His name is Houdini. You'll see why later. I trapped him inside a perfect box that he couldn't escape from to make sure he was safe. I collected a bunch of clay from the upper yard I then got another scabby and milk molar near the hedge. I made a difficult jump, allowing me to collect yet another scabby and milk molar. Once home, I managed to get raided by lava yet again. For the second time in a row, they destroyed the ramp up to my base. I repaired the ramp and headed up to expand my base. I was finally able to complete the floor, which was huge. Here it is in photo mode, so you can understand just how much clay and pebbles it took to build this. I was running under the tree when my pet Aphid ran past. That's right, he escaped. I got a pet house and named him Houdini after the famous escape artist and began constructing a prison. I mean, safe pet house for him. I built him a giant prison from clay foundations to ensure he couldn't escape. I was able to get the gold tadpole card Another one. and spent more milk molars reducing my hunger and thirst drain. I spent my raw science unlocking fortified bases, meat shield, Daredevil, zip lines, waft emitter, and the scabby scanner for scabbies and raw science. I made two more ovens and then upgraded my Club of the Mother Demon to level 7 Mighty. I killed a wolf spider, unlocking stage 3 of the Mithridatism mutation. My scabby scanner did its job and helped me find the first scabby that I had missed. I used my tier 3 hammer to open the back of the giant scabby and insert the fuse. I used the bio scanner to open the undershed lab. I discovered a field station which had a piece of data inside and also unlock tier 3 of Natural Explorer in the process. I'm fast as boy! I collected a milk molar and realised I'd fallen into a spider ravine. I took out the Black Widowlings and then proceeded to enter the den. It was time for our hardest fight yet. I made a good start, but started taking hits later in the fight. Thankfully, I only got hit a couple of times all fight and was able to vanquish our first Black Widow. The Widow was kind and gave me two Venom and a Fang. I broke a tier 3 marble rock and it all disappeared into the vat of raw science above it. The game is broken, EA Sports! The game is broken! I then headed into the Undershed Lab. I pulled the lever and made it to the Mant Room. I wasn't scared at all. This guy's easy. I drank some smoothies and went into the fight. This guy does no damage and might as well not be a boss. Okay now, I'd never seen that attack before, so cut me a little bit of slack here. I had no idea he could just explode his entire back. I used the pipe shortcut to quickly get across the Undershed Ravine. Thankfully, my loot spawned outside the boss fight. I went back in, and this time I was prepared for the explosive attack. After dodging it, I rolled the mant and unlocked Mansterious Stranger. I then looted his body for the gold card and a thousand raw science. This gold unlocked tier 2 of Trapper Peeper. I hit the button, used the bioscanner, hit another button, and then used another bioscanner, before grabbing the Tully Scabby along with the fresh storage recipe, and then talked to Wendell. 
I grabbed the grilled science and gave it to him. I made myself a fridge, Harry Maguire, and stored the meals from Wendell's fridge inside. I moved Houdini's pet house as he was stuck underneath. When I pet him, he decided to float and then escaped his prison yet again. But this idiot loves plant slurry so much he was easily trapped again. I built a bunch of trophies as one of my goals was to make them all. I decided it was time for a mixer. I unlocked tier three of Blade Master in the process and was able to easily complete it without even building. This gave me stage one of Guard Dog and 2000 raw science. I used milk molars to increase my max stamina and then made a fire ant shield. I completed another trail marker for Burgle as I needed a lot of raw science if I wanted to empty the science shop and 100% the game. I headed back to the termite nest and grabbed the bag containing five free twinkling shells. I then headed inside and grabbed the sawdust scabby along with the upgrade rocks next to it. I then grabbed a milk molar. My salt morning star broke so I had to leave before killing the king. I broke some salt in the ravine and got another trinket, the shiny salt crystal. Oh, no, get the camera! I used my megas to increase my max resource stack size again and then used my molars to reduce my hunger and thirst drain rate. I used the surveyor scanner to look for salt so I could repair my morning star. Time to take on the king. This fight didn't last very long and my poison made quick work of the king, giving me four Termite King carapaces, along with the woodpile burgle chip, meaning we had now collected all of the burgle chips. I collected the mega milk molar, and then broke all of the quartzite rocks in the room. I jumped off of the axe handle to collect 500 of the hardest raw science to get in the game. I gave burgle the final chip, and unlocked the wizard hat and candy staves. I went back to the charcoal springs to grab the entomologist badge and did some crazy parkour to get the power droplet. I went to the fallen tree and grabbed Thor's pendant, giving us most of the trinkets in the game. I broke all of the sour candy in a rocket, but sadly didn't get a trinket. While collecting a glider, I got lucky and got the fluffy dandelion tuft, adding yet another trinket to the collection. Data update. I was now three pieces of data away from a complete collection. I collected the Puncho Scabby from on top of the Puncho juice box and then headed back to the haze. When killing an infected gnat, I got the gold card. Oh, I'm not having this. I'm what, not having what, this. What, what, no, 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 no. I discovered the juice box, which unlocked the juicy mutation. I conquered the hamster cave, giving me the syndrome Scabby. I headed onto the rock and got a gold card from infected mite. Stop it. Get some help. Before grabbing the Scabby and raw science. I used Truffle Tussle on a black soldier ant to break a cracked rock, allowing me to collect another scabby. I built up the side of a plant pot in the sandbox to collect another mega milk molar, and then decided to build up to the sand castle to complete a trail marker for Burgle and collect yet another milk molar. I did some more crazy parkour, allowing me to break the gum and collect the sticky key in the upper yard. I then used the key to unlock the chest, allowing me to collect two milk molars, along with the bomb arrow recipe. I managed to get another gold card, this time from the red soldier ant, and then used my megas to max out my resource stack size at 35. I spent my milk molars on maxing out reducing my hunger and thirst rate at 50%. I built the early access sign sets, which everyone who played the game before 1.0 gets. They're pretty cool. I parkoured up a plant to get onto a laser and collected the greystone scabby. I built the trail marker and plugged the haze on day 60, meaning a very dangerous enemy was coming. I managed to peep the infected wolf spider and quickly ran away. Let's get out of here. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. I made myself a black ox crossbow along with a load of arrows. I then upgraded the crossbow to level 5. I broke some gum, revealing a mega milk molar, and then proceeded to kill a bunch of bees. I needed a lot of fuzz and stingers for stuffed bugs and zip lines. I spent the mega milk molar on increasing my arrow stack size. I was spotted by the infected wolf spider. I tried to run, but got stuck on the tree. When I turned around, he forgot I was even there and I successfully escaped. I hit a web sack to attract the widowlings. While fighting the widow, a ladybird decided to show up. I almost died, but ran back into the widow's nest for safety. Eventually, I was able to kill the widow and got two venom and two fangs. Very generous. I found a new field station containing one of the final pieces of data I needed. For the next widow, I used rocks to attract the widowlings. I also got another gold card. I killed the widow and got two venom and a fang. Yet again, very generous. This meant I had enough venom for the widow dagger 
and enough fangs for the widow chest plate, which I instantly upgraded to level 9 sleek. Time to build a ramp. After a long day of building, I was finally able to get up to the bird bath and complete another trail marker. I also grabbed some raw science and a scabby. I used my megas to increase my max arrow stack size again. I used my milk molars to increase my maximum health. I broke a billy hog and I saw it. The holy grail. The best trinket in the game. The billy hog stopper. <laughs> I can confirm that my mouth did indeed stay open for the next 10 minutes after getting it, because this was my first ever time. I grabbed the rotten lava blade and then killed my first green shield bug for its parts. I did some parkour in the hedge to obtain the witchly scabby. I then decided to take on another brood mother and was able to get the gold card. With the parts, I made myself a salty and spicy club of the Mother Demon, meaning we now had three two-handed tier 3 weapons, each with a different element. I took a leap of faith from hundreds of centimetres in the sky. Luckily, grounded as a fall damage cap, so there was no chance of me dying. I managed to get a Stinkbug gold card. I needed clovers, so I used some bomb arrows to mass farm them. This saved me about 10 minutes of my life. I scanned for spider fang to try and find the infected wolf spider. When I went to the location, he was missing. That's right, he glitched under the map, meaning I never had to worry about him again for the rest of the 100 days. I built a new platform high in the sky so that I could make zip lines to take me all across the map. I tried to fight an infected ladybug, but got stuck on some dry grass. Since you can't block explosions, I had no choice but to accept my fate. I headed back to Wendell's fridge and stole the rest of his meals. Stop! Thief! It's mine! I killed an Orc Weaver Jr. and got the Gold Orb Weaver Jr. card. I managed to get another gold card from the Lawn Knight. <laughs> when is it gonna end, Robbie? I've had enough of it! I threw a perfect bomb, breaking a cracked rock and allowing me to collect a Milk Molar. I used another bomb in the Fire Ant Hill, allowing me to collect another Mega Milk Molar. I got the Swole Scabby at the bottom of the nest, and then attempted some of the hardest parkour in the game. Before the Natural Explorer buff, this used to be a lot harder. As you can see, it's a lot easier now. I used the Megas to increase my max arrow stack size, and the Molars to increase my max stamina. I peeped a moth, meaning I had now peeped every creature. Time for mixer number two in the hedge. This one was harder than I expected, and the mixer was very close to breaking due to my lack of building. But I was successful on my first attempt giving me 2,000 raw science. I broke some haze fungus and was lucky enough to get the fungal charm trinket. I went into an exposed pipe and got some raw science, a mega milk molar, and a scabby. I headed to the trash pile and saw a mess. There was food everywhere. I collected it all as it would be good fodder for beefy slop smoothies. Yoink! I got a gold card from the Black Soldier Ant. After 75 days, my game crashed for the first time. I used megas to increase my max arrow stack size, Again, five to go. I built a ramp up to another of the lasers and after a bit of parkour, was able to collect the Hyper Blaster Scabby. I unlocked stage one of Smasher by killing Spiderlings. I then unlocked stage one of Assassin. I was farming Spiderlings for mutations as I needed stage one of every mutation to 100% the game. I made a full set of Fire Ant armor and upgraded all to level nine Sleek, apart from the leggings as I was one plate short. I also made a sour level six Rusty Spear and upgraded my club of the mother demon to spicy level 7. I built a ramp up to the Moldock castle and parkoured to the top. With one more ramp, I was able to get inside. I collected a scabby, milk molar and mega milk molar from the outside. Inside, I got a milk molar and tried to get Wendell to unlock the door, but he wouldn't come. I used my widow dagger to collect some pond moss from the moat. These spiny water fleas really like to gang up on you. I parkoured up to the wheelbarrow and decided it would be a good idea to try and kill the moth. It hit me once and even though I was blocking, I still died. I collected my stuff and parkoured up to the field station and grabbed the Mega Milk Molar. On the way down, I grabbed the Milk Molar. I grabbed the final Mega Milk Molar from high up in the stump. This meant I could now max out all of my Milk Molar and Mega Milk Molar upgrades. However, I was still missing two more milk molars. I made a mint staff 
and decided to upgrade it to level 5. After getting one kill with it, I instantly unlocked the Whistle Wizard mutation. I used a crossbow to farm mites for stage 1 of Sharpshooter and unlocked stage 1 of Lilfist as well. I used grass planks to glitch up to get the molar inside the Black Widow cave without even fighting it. I decided to fight the Widow anyway, as I needed its drops. I made the Widow leggings and upgraded them to level 9 sleek. I then decided to upgrade my full set of antline armor to level 7 bulky, for a certain defense later on. I got stage 1 of Javelinia from Spiderlings, meaning I was only missing 3 more mutations. I asked my friend Lewis to briefly join me so that I could murder him, in order to obtain stage 1 of Reliable Friend, leaving 2 mutations to go. I put the ingredients into the Javamatic, and then pushed the switch, activating it. What the hell? I used a repair tool to repair all three mixer modules, and then talked to Wendell. I grabbed the very last milk molar from inside the tree in the western upper yard. Back to the Moldock castle, where Wendell decided to finally show up and open the door for me. I opted for a full set of level 9 sleek fire ant armor with a fist build to try and beat Schmechter. My first attempt was going well until everything hit me up once and I instantly died. Attempt number two, I got hit by a big blue ball that I didn't even see coming. Attempt number three, blocking an attack stunned me and I died before I could get back up. Time to make a Sour Club of the Mother Demon level 7. I also switched to level 9 bulky roly-poly armor for maximum defense. Attempt number 4. I was doing very well until Wendell blocked me from running and got me killed. Stupid robot. <laughs> Attempt number 5. Again, I got hit by three things at once, dying instantly. Attempt number 6. I ran into the lasers right as they turned on, killing me instantly. On attempt number 7, I was finally able to beat the director. This unlocked the corporate kickback mutation and gave me the ominent data disc, a thousand raw science, and the gold card. While leaving the castle, I took another stupid death to a tiger mosquito. While farming weevils for food, I got yet another gold card. I am flabbergasted. Time for the third mixer in the haze. This one was easier than the hedge, and I got another 2,000 raw science. I built all the way up to the paint can just for 100 raw science. Back to the black ant hill for more smoothie fodder. I mean, just look at all of this free food. Next was the sand pit mixer. This one was also very easy. I was almost finished when two ant lions came up behind me at the exact same time, killing me instantly. Unfortunately, the mixer didn't quite survive. I couldn't be bothered to get my backpack, so I just used the Recover Backpacks feature and picked it up from the kids' case instead. Let's try and unlock the Kultana recipe instead. I had a full set of level 9 bulky antline armor and a mint mace. I got a gold ladybird lava card, and after a while, I was able to complete this relatively easily, obtaining the recipe for the Kultana and stage 2 of the guard dog mutation. Science shop update. I had spent all of my raw science and needed 23.5k raw science to unlock the rest of the shop. I completed another of my side objectives by building a sign frame with every unique pattern on them. Some of them look really cool. I also made myself a sour and spicy staff. I killed a water flea and, you guessed it, I got another gold card. Time for a rematch with the moth. With the new sour staff, this fight was a breeze and I destroyed the moth. I crafted Sarah's charm, meaning our trinket collection now looked like this in case you were curious. Not to forget Thor's pendant and the hog stopper which are in my inventory. I started to put armor on the stands as it was one of my objectives to collect and display all of it. I then built my weapon displays as I wanted to do the same with the weapons. I killed the scarabs in the underground pipe, giving me a total of 9 twinkling shells. This allowed me to upgrade my mint maze to level 8. I rebuilt and repaired the sandbox mixer for a second attempt. I got the antline gold card and then easily beat the mixer. This gave me another 2000 raw science. Then I took on the first mixer in the upper yard. This one took more building, but was also beaten on the first attempt, netting me yet another 2,000 raw science. Time for the first super mixer in the upper yard. I was about 40% of the way done when my game decided to crash, meaning I had to restart. Time for round two. I got the Roly Poly gold card, followed by the Fireworker Ant gold card. There were too many enemies at the end, and the mixer became overrun, causing me to fail. On my second attempt, there were yet again too many enemies for me to kill and while trying to stop them from breaking the mixer, I was killed. Third time's the charm, I was able to beat the mixer just barely and claim my prize of a whopping 4,000 raw science. I was fighting a Black Ox Beetle and realized that I had no shield equipped, 
meaning I couldn't block the boulder as it came flying at me and killed me. Oh look, another gold card. I stuffed a stink bug, meaning I completed all stuffed bugs bar the stuffed firefly. Stevie Wonder was reincarnated as a scarab, and I was able to get two twinkling shells for free. But I cannot see I'm legally blind. I made a lovely chest with all of the consumables and rotten gear in the game. Houdini had been good, so I gave him a fire ant helmet as a present. I stuffed my firefly to complete the stuffed bug collection. I used my zipline to the birdbath, which glitched and killed me instantly. Just grounded things. Time to suffer. I equipped some mutations and drank a bunch of smoothies. It was time for the Mantis boss fight. My strategy was to shoot it with both types of venom arrows and then hit it with every poison type to stack them all together. Then use the salty club of the mother demon to deal the majority of the damage. On attempt one, I died to whatever the hell this is. Attempt two, let's go. Our mosquito decided to join the fight mid battle and hit me right as the mantis attacked, killing me. Attempt number three, the mantis decided it can jump in place, causing it to hit me twice in quick succession, which cannot be perfect blocked, causing me to die guaranteed every time. In my next attempt, I ran away as soon as the mantis started its attack. Clearly, I wasn't quick enough. I got killed by the ultra combo attack yet again, and then the mantis jumped in place, killing me instantly again. Killed by the slam attack again. Apparently, she causes earthquakes that go through the tree, killing me. What am I even supposed to do here? I was moving away the entire time. This one was my bad. I didn't realize she was doing this attack. I headed home and made a bunch of salt arrows. I switched my armor to the bulky roly-poly armor and upgraded my crossbow to level 7. I gave up trying to fight the mantis fairly. Time to use a bow. <laughs> I peeped the mantis and managed to kill her first time with a bow. This proves how broken OP the bows are and how much easier and more boring it makes the game. I almost died, but ultimately I beat her on my first attempt with a bow. This unlocked the Apex Predator mutation and gave me a bunch of Mantis parts. I analyzed Ash Cement, which allowed me to hit my maximum brain power at 2910. I built a giant structure around the next Super Mixer, as I only had 6 days left, so couldn't afford to fail. Every single wall broke, but the Mixer was barely able to hold on, and I completed it on the first attempt, giving us another 4000 raw science. For the final mixer, I built a giant grass wall for the mosquitoes. I talked to Wendell, and he unlocked the storage facility for me, giving me access to even more resources. Here's how I prepared for the final super mixer. We had loads of small grass walls as a distraction, and a giant pyramid built around the mixer, so that I could quickly get up to kill the mosquitoes. Time to see if we can beat it. I activated it and built two more floors of protection. I made sure to equip Thor's pendant and drink a bunch of smoothies for buffs. The green shield bug arrived and quickly departed. Yay! Eventually, I was able to beat the mixer without it taking any damage at all. I got the tiger mosquito gold card as well as stage 3 of guard dog. I grabbed my 4000 raw science and instantly spent it in the raw science shop, meaning we had now bought everything. With all the mixers beaten, I was now able to unlock the secret room in the black ant nest. This gave me the prod smacker and a load of amazing loot. Here's how we look going into the final mixer. We have a little mushroom house around each of the mixers and a bunch of mini walls everywhere. Let's get mixing one last time. As you can see with this black ox, I was smoking every single bug. This was easier than the previous mixer and I beat it first time with no damage on any of the modules. This allowed me to collect the final and beginning cocktail. I crafted an ever charcoal torch and a charcoal canteen and began displaying all of my weapons and armor. I was cutting it really close. I killed a Black Widow and only got one Venom. I needed more. I killed another and got no Venom. I killed three Moths and got exactly enough to craft all of the armor. Because of my bad RNG, I had to fight another Black Widow. This caused me to die a total three more times as it's the hardest Widow to kill and I had almost no smoothies left. When I looted it, it gave me the final piece of Venom I needed. I used the give up and recover backpacks function to quickly travel home. It cost me a death, but saved me vital minutes. I crafted the remaining armor and put them on the stands. The only thing I didn't craft was the assassin armor as the mantis was annoying. I dropped from my zip line and put the embiggening cell into the spacer. I hit the button and activated it, completing the game. Time for the moment of truth. Did I get 100%? Of course. After 100 days, I had successfully 100%ed the game, with only 48 deaths. 
as I missed two from the counter. Not bad, considering at one point I was averaging more than a death a day. Thank you so much for watching the 100 days video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. This took me over 200 hours of effort to make. As always, I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.